Welcome to The Exchange. I'm Guy Schoen, bringing you the biggest news and interviews from all around the business world. Coming up on the show, is it a bird? Is it a plane? On this episode of The Exchange, we're looking at the business of flying cars. Irai Bazaar, founder and CEO of Aircar, joins us on the show. And you may think airships are a thing of the past, but we'll tell you why these huge aircrafts are staging a comeback. There are a few things more frustrating, aren't there, than getting stuck in a traffic jam. But there's growing demand in the tech space to turn flying cars, like the ones in 60s cartoon The Jetsons, into reality. Well, officially known as Electric Vertical Takeoff and Landing Aircraft, or EVITOL, these vehicles lift off, hover and land vertically. Well, the market is expected to be worth $25 billion by 2035, so it's no wonder investors are keeping their eyes in the sky. The all-electric aircrafts are built to produce no direct carbon dioxide emissions. And more than 50 firms are developing several prototype aircraft with the capacity to transport up to 20 passengers. Well, one of those companies is Turkish startup Aircar. But how close are we to living our Jetson's dream? Here's Miranda Lynn. Yes, Sky, the words flying car sound like something out of science fiction. But a startup here in Istanbul is showing that idea might be ready for takeoff sooner than you think. Traffic and pollution are the banes of city living. But Aircar has been looking for ways to break out of the gridlock since it was founded in 2017. Instead of waiting for governments to slowly build bigger roads and better public transportation, the company has set its sights higher. There she is. Look at her go. Based in Turkey's version of Silicon Valley, Aircar has partnered with the country's largest software maker. The ultimate vision is to have a network of flying taxis that are entirely electric powered and self-driving. After conducting more than a thousand small scale trials, testing on a full size prototype began this year. Aircar's CEO says the company expects to start carrying passengers by early 2025. Aircar says it wants to be an industry disruptor and it's ready to take the road less traveled in order to build a new flying future. Well, let's speak to the man behind the business, Irai Altenbazar, the CEO of Aircar. Irai, what made you start a flying car business? How did it all begin? Well, it all started in 2017. I was involved in academia and, and professionally in sustainable technologies. And I realized with using the current technologies in lithium-ion batteries, composites, and drone technologies, and AI, it was possible to, to get into this flying car business. And I thought it is the right time to start because it all starts early because it's a hard tech and it's hard to, to it's a hard problem to solve it. Realistically, when will we see commuters flying to work in air car taxis? To be honest, we expect starting operations in 2025 to 2026 uh, in, in low volume. And after that, it will uh, steadily pick up. So it will become normal, hopefully, by 2030. And then it will scale up after that. Thanks, Irai. Imagine that then, people taking flying taxis to work in just a matter of years. Well, for now, the promise of helicars is to transport humans over shorter distances. But what about bigger deliveries? French company Flying Wales says its huge blimp-like airships can not only transport 60-ton payloads over long distances, but can do so sustainably. Earlier, I spoke to the CEO of Flying Wales, Sebastian Bourgon, who shared about how his company's product can revolutionize the healthcare industry. The idea is using a large capacity airship in island or remote area to deliver a hospital. You leave it for, for example, two weeks, then you take care of all the people around, and then you bring it to another place, it stays again two weeks, and you can come back every year, or two times a year, or three times a year, depending on, on, on how much you need, and you can bring to remote population the same quality of health, uh, of healthcare that you can bring in large cities. Well, we've heard from the C-suite, but what's the sentiment from industry analysts? Phil Seymour is president at aviation consultancy IBA. Phil, surely regulatory hurdles are on the horizon now for these companies? The regulation regarding uh, 
uh, I say things that fly that are over a certain weight um, is, is very heavily regulated both by the, you know, the EASA, the European Aviation Safety Agency, uh, and the likes of the US Federal Aviation Administration. And all of the, the countries that uh, we're in around the world have regulators which follow fairly strict uh, manufacturing and design guidelines. Um, so I think I'm, I'm reasonably satisfied that the, there's a, a safety and regulation network in place. Thanks, Phil, for your insight. Now, it might seem smooth sailing for investment in new modes of air transport. Not everyone's completely sold on the idea, though. Dr. Andreas Bodenhagen is a professor at the Technical University of Berlin. Here's his take on some of the headwinds facing these companies. On the short run, I'm not very optimistic because if uh, you compare the uh, load of, uh, or the number of passengers a train can transport uh, from central Berlin to, uh, to the airport and compare it to an uh, conventional or modern helicopter, uh, the, uh, it's pretty much less. So if you want to go for hundreds of people, then you get a very crowded airspace, which will not be accepted by the public, I assume. It's time for our regular feature, Business in 60 Seconds. Start the clock. The US releases inflation data for the month of October. Consumer prices have been surging past the Federal Reserve's 2% target since April, and there seems to be no signs of abating. Increasing food and rent prices have taken the bulk of the jump to record high inflation. The Walt Disney Company reports full year and fourth quarter results. The entertainment giant has been bouncing back from the pandemic lull by reopening its theme parks and releasing backlogged original content. Its newest Marvel superhero movie, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, has surpassed $400 million at the global box office. And AstraZeneca releases its earnings for the third quarter. Despite initial hiccups in its vaccine rollout, the pharmaceutical firm's top and bottom lines have benefited from continued efforts by countries around the world to inoculate their populations. The company is also hoping to get a lift from its acquisition of rare medicines business, Elexom. So, flying cars, no longer a fantasy, billions of dollars fueling dozens of startups worldwide. But will it remain a novelty for the rich, or can it truly transform how we all travel? Well, that's all we have time for on this edition of the show. Thanks for watching. Please do check out Euronews.com for all your latest business news and join us again next time on The Exchange.